John Cola with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode, and for you guys and girls out there, what I'm going to do for you guys today is share with you guys my top 10 tips for batch juicing like a pro. I consider myself a pro. I'm in number one world's expert in juicers, and today I'm going to drop some juicing knowledge bombs on you guys so that you guys can batch juice. Now, batch juicing, what is batch juicing? Batch juicing is juicing a lot of juice at once so that you can feed it to many people. Maybe you have a large family. Maybe you want to just drink a lot of juice because you're on a juice fast. Or maybe you're like most of us that work 9 to 5 every day and you don't have the time in the morning to juice every single day. But if you took an hour or maybe even two hours on a weekend day, right, with a batch juicer you can basically create enough juice to have one quart or even two quarts a day easily if you follow my tips surely I have other videos online where I show how I personally batch juice links down below to those where I show how I make a green juice during batch juicing I think it make like about seven quarts in under an hour and then I make a root juice, batch juicing. I think I made like uh, 10 quarts. That took a little bit over an hour. Um, but it's easy to do, but I want you guys to do it correctly. There's a lot of videos on batch juicing that I watch online that I'm like, uh, I'm gritting my teeth and I don't agree with as a juicing expert and somebody who has been juicing for the last 28 years. I want you guys to have the best knowledge so that you, I, you guys could succeed and achieve your health goals or weight loss goals or whatever they are. I've been selling juicers now for 25 years online. I've been making YouTube videos for the last 15 years. I have videos comparing all the major brand juicers and even some inexpensive ones against each other so that you guys could find the right juicer for you. For me, it's so important that you not only get the right juicer, but more importantly, you start juicing on a regular and consistent basis. I have excellent beginner videos, Juicing 101, I'll put a link down below to that. I have videos on how to formulate your own recipes and make your own juices, links down below to that as well. I have videos about how I recommend you guys juice fruit, I'll put a link down below to that as well. So I have lots of content for you guys to glean and you know absorb hopefully some of my knowledge so that you do juicing in the best way possible. In any case, in this episode, we're going to get into batch juicing because that's the way I juice. And I know some of you guys just want to juice a glass a day so you could watch my other videos and you could buy a juicer that's good for making a glass a day. Of course, all the batch juicers can make a glass a day too if you don't want to batch juice. But the main benefit I see is that people love batch juicing because it allows them to produce a large quantity of juice at once a lot easier than... A traditional juice that you got to stick each produce item into and it basically takes up your valuable time when a batch juicer literally you load up the hopper you shut the lid you walk away and it's juicing 24 ounces to a quart of juice in one fall shroop without your input it's like a robot that's doing your juicing for you so you no longer have to go to the expensive juice bar or buy pasteurized and heat processed juices from the grocery store at great expense, right? You could now have fresh juices to drink at home. Now, the other thing you guys may have noticed is that my YouTube channel is called DiscountJuicers.com. That's because I'm the owner of DiscountJuicers.com. And I originally started this business 25 years ago to ensure you guys get the best deal and best price on the juicers out there. And that's what I'm going to do for you guys today. If you guys are looking to buy... My favorite juicer, the Namid J2, which is the juicer I recommend for batch juicing. You guys want to use a coupon code, we'll throw up right there, BATCH10, and that'll save you guys 10% off the price of the Namid J2, which will save you guys 55 bucks, which is an amazing saving. So yeah, if you guys appreciate my videos, appreciate my content, appreciate all the time, effort, and knowledge that I share with you guys, I would encourage you guys to use that coupon code because not only will NAMA share with me a small commission so I can continue to make my educational videos for you guys, 
but also, of course, you guys are going to save some money as well. All right, so on with this video, and let's get into my top 10 tips. My first tip is choose the right juicer for batch juicing. There's many different juicers on the market that now have a hopper that you can basically fill up the hopper, shut the lid, walk away, and let the machine work and go to town and juice for you so that you don't have to. If you guys want to batch juice, this is a style of juicer that I recommend for you guys. We have a few examples today here. This is the Haram H310. This is the Omega Effortless Batch Juicer. And of course, this is my favorite, the Nama J2 Juicer. And if you're asking me for my personal opinion on which one of these batch juicers is the best, here's the thing, guys. They all have their own sets of pros and cons. And to determine which one is right for you, I'd encourage you guys to watch my video where I compare the NAMA against the HURAM H310, link down below to that. I also compare the NAMA to the Omega Effortless Batch Juicer, link down below to that as well, so you guys can see how they perform in real world testing when I am actually juicing with them the same exact recipe. And to sum it up, I'll tell you guys that both these machines took longer to juice the same given amount of produce than the NAMA J2 in my video demonstrations. You know, yield, maybe one of these could have had a little bit higher yield than the NAMA J2. I'm not going to say the NAMA J2 is always going to be the best, but on the factors that are poor to me, such as the warranty length, which is 15 years on the entire machine, such as the customer service of the company, NAMA is quite responsive. You know, I, the last time I contacted them, they replied within an hour, and that was on a Saturday, which is quite impressive response time to me. Most juicer companies take the weekends off. I don't know if NAMA is even open on Sunday, but they're open Saturday for sure. And also, it's a great performer. And the other thing, honestly, guys, this machine has been outselling all other juicers at least 20 to 1 from the data that I could see. So this is really popular with many people. It's probably the number one best-selling juicer, slow juicer in the country at the moment. Now that doesn't mean it's gonna be right for you, but I'll tell you guys this. This is the one that I use 90% of the time when I am juicing. And if you guys are batch juicing, if you guys don't wanna watch all my other videos, right, to find out the nuances on why I like this one the best, I would just say go with the NAMA J2, because overall in my testing, it performed the best and it's what I like to use the most. My second bulk juicing tip for you guys is that I want you guys to have the right equipment. Imagine if you took your car to an auto mechanic, right, and he didn't have the right tools to work on your car and he was using a hammer to fix any the, everything, including the body. Yeah, wouldn't work too well. So I want you guys to have the right tools to effectively do batch juicing to save time. I've been juicing for 28 years now myself and I collected all the different tools over these many years and I refined what I need specifically to batch juice to just some of the items that you see here today. So let's get into the tools. So I already mentioned in tip number one, you wanna have the right juicer, which to me is the Nama J2. Of course, the Nama J2 comes with collection cups one collection cup to collect the pulp, which is a nice oversized container. And then they give you a collection cup to collect the juice, which is measured up to 1,000 milliliters or 35 ounces. To me, this is not quite big enough to do batch juicing because it's going to get filled up too quickly. So I have, you know, a larger container as well as a lot of different paraphernalia that I use as well. If you guys are interested in getting any of these accessories that I'm explaining right now, link down below to my Amazon store, amazon.com slash shop slash John Kohler, where you can find links to all these products. So you don't have to hunt all and scour the internet for them because some of them actually are quite difficult to find. All right, so let's get into it. The first Item I recommend is a nice knife. I use the Cairo Serra Micro Serrated Ceramic Tomato Knife. It's my number one favorite knife in the whole world. Now it is ceramic, it is quite sharp, and it is micro serrated, so this will cut through any fruit or vegetable that's not hard, you know, so don't use it on like a butternut squash, for example. I've broken them on butternut squash, but through carrots and beets and apples and all the fruits or even tomatoes, cuts it really nice, super sharp doesn't need sharpening basically. You also will need a nice cutting board. This is actually a Japanese cutting board. Uh, once again, link down below. And the thing on the cutting board is you want a nice, large, oversized cutting board. You don't want a tiny little cutting board, guys. 
you're going to be chopping up a lot of stuff, have piles of different things, and I like having a large cutting board so you can arrange the stacks of different produce items on the cutting board simply and easily. Of course, aside from that, you'll need a nice large catch container. We talked about the small container, right? This one holds twice as much easily. This is measured up to 2,000 milliliters, and then you can even fill it a little bit higher than that. This fits easily under the Nama J2 juicer. It's known as the Anchor Hawking um, two quart mixing bowl that's glass. Also, I recommend if you guys uh, get a sieve, and this is actually a five and a half inch fine sieve. I like the ones that have two little um, you know, legs on it so you can set it right underneath as the juice comes out. You'll need to shake it down during the process. Um, once again, links down below to that. Of course, sieving out and straining your juice is optional. You don't need to do it. If you don't mind some pulp in the juice, drink the pulp. That's honestly probably better for you. I just really don't like the texture of any additional pulp in my juices. So actually, I double strain it myself. Of course, after you make all the juice, now you need to put it in something. I only recommend you guys store your juices in glass. And the favorite glass containers that I use are glass mason jars. These happen to be uh, the quart size mason jars. They also make them in a 16 ounce as well as 24 ounce and even 64 ounce, which I don't necessarily recommend storing your juices in. I recommend storing your juices in a single serve size. So if you're going to drink a quart at once, then use the quart size. If you're going to drink only 16 ounces at once, then use the 16 ounce size. I do also recommend the wide mouth. They're a lot easier to clean and get into when you're done. You may need a funnel and if you're going to pour the juice directly from the pitcher here, you could just pour it into the container without a funnel, but I like to always double strain my juice because that's just what I do. So I got a nice canning funnel that I'll set on top and then this sieve will basically sit right on top so that I can pour the juice out a uh, second time through the sieve to catch any residual pulp. So I have, you know, more of a pulp free juice when I'm done. Now, a lot of people online may say, fill up your, you know, juice up to the brim and then put the lid on it and seal it. So you're excluding the air in there. So the oxidation will occur, you know, less. And, you know, while that was good in the 1970s and 80s, when I learned that <laughs> nowadays we have better technology and it's not expensive, guys. What I recommend you guys get a kit. Basically, it includes these little vacuum lids and a vacuum pump. These kits can be as low as around $10, maybe $20, depending on what kit you get to do vacuum storage of your juices. Now, if you guys don't want a manual pump like this, and honestly, the blue pump that is currently being sold is the most powerful pump that I've found currently. It pulls in excess of 22 inches of mercury, or maybe over 20 inches of mercury. And because it sucks such a strong vacuum, it actually, it could pull out dissolved oxygen from your juices. Nobody talks about this. You don't have to really worry about what it is. But basically, when you put the juice in there, you don't fill it up to the top. You fill it up like to here, maybe like 800 milliliters. And then you just start pumping it out. You'll basically pump out the oxygen out of the headspace first. But then secondarily, if you continue to pump even more, right? And I usually pump sometimes up to 10, 12, 15 times, right? I really go for it. And you can really feel the resistance. And it does take some strength. So you'll build some muscles juicing. <laughs> Although I still recommend going to the gym. Um, you know, you'll basically start pulling out the air, the dissolved oxygen out of the juice, and you'll see that rise up to the top. That's why you don't want to fill it to the brim when you're sucking a vacuum on it, because the juice level may increase. Some juices increase more than others, depending on what you're juicing and your specific recipe. But then once you get the dissolved oxygen out, then you're basically set to store this juice, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. But yeah, you need the right equipment to juice in bulk successfully link down below once again so tip number three is i want you guys to select the best fruits and vegetables for batch juicing it makes me sad when i see other batch juicers online and they're showing basically juicing batches of fruits such as watermelon and pineapple because watermelon and pineapple make a lot of juice very quickly fairly easily the challenge with that is that, you know, you're drinking basically 100% fruit juice with very little vegetables if you add any in there. 
My goal as somebody who's been juicing for the last 28 years and also I educate people about drinking fresh juices is that I encourage you guys to minimally do a 50% fruit, 50% vegetable juice. Now this makes batch juicing a little bit more difficult because not all vegetables are conducive to batch juicing. You know, if I juice carrots in a batch juice, right, and try to buy like 25 pounds of carrots, that would take a long time. Carrot takes a lot of time to process and is relatively a slower item to juice. It is quite nutritious, so yes, you should still use it, but that's not going to be your base of your juice. So what I'm going to recommend to you guys now are the base fruits and vegetables that you guys can use for batch juicing. We'll start with the sweet fruits first. Of course, sweet fruits I recommend things like watermelon, right? Things like cantaloupe, things like honeydew melon, and actually all other melons are wonderful to batch juice. You could actually even juice the skins and the rinds and the seeds. And the seeds are actually rich in fatty acids, um, and the rinds are full of nutrition. I encourage you guys to wash them well if you are choosing to juice the skins and the rinds which is more nutritious than the inner part in many cases of those fruits. I encourage you guys also to choose organic whenever possible and if you guys can't afford it. Of course, other fruits that are great for batch juicing include pineapple. I'm not a big fan of pineapple because pine when you juice pineapple, you lose basically almost all of the fiber that is included with the pineapple because it is only 10% soluble fiber. With other fruits, they contain higher levels of soluble fiber, so you can retain more of the fiber that, you know, when you juice it, is in more of a disturbed state than natural state. And I'll have to talk about that in another upcoming video. In addition, things like apples are wonderful for batch juicing. They're high in pectin, and actually they're probably one of my preferred fruits for batch juicing. Of course, pears and Asian pears, also excellent for batch juicing, as is citrus fruits. You could put lemons and limes in whole. Uh, you should be basically cutting off the coloring but keeping as much of the white pith as possible when you juice things like oranges, grapefruits, and tangerines. So that was a list of sweet fruits and unfortunately sweet fruits are the default for most people for batch juicing but I want to make you guys aware of the non-sweet fruits that are excellent for batch juicing as well. The top of my list is the winter melon. We'll throw up a picture right there because you've probably never seen what it is. It's also called the ash gourd. This may be available at Asian markets or ethnic markets near you. Some American grocery stores may sell it also. Now you may think, John, that looks like a watermelon right up there. But it's not a watermelon. It's more like a squash. So you could cut it open. It looks like a watermelon. But when you eat it, it tastes more like a cucumber, actually. It's rich and juicy, and that's probably one of the best things you guys could use in your batch juices because it's not going to contribute to any significant amount of sweetness or sugar in your juice that can be challenging when you juice fruits, for example, that are sweet. Of course, some other non-sweet fruits that you guys can also batch juice. My favorite, boom, the bell peppers. All colors of bell peppers. I prefer the yellow uh, red and orange because they're ripe. The green ones are unripe, so they're not going to taste as good. I encourage you guys to, you know, choose the ripe peppers whenever possible. I juice those in bulk, just I do straight bell pepper juice actually, and I use that as my soup base. Of course, other fruits you guys can use tomatoes. Tomatoes are wonderful to use in batch juicing, and here's my tip the best tomato to batch juice are the cherry tomatoes because they have a lot larger skin area and they're generally firmer than those large beef steaks. With more skin area, they're going to juice a bit better and of course they're also going to be more rich in nutrition. I almost forgot one of my favorite non-sweet fruits to batch juice are the cucumbers, right? On the cucumbers, my favorite absolutely are the English cucumbers. Second best would be the Persian cucumbers, or you could just get the standard market more cucumbers. The standard market more cucumbers have like a little bit more of a bitter skin. That's why I like the English cucumbers the most. They're really rich in water and hydration. Going to give you lots of good nutrition, including the chlorophyll in there, but not add sweetness to your juice, but add a lot of bulk. 
The last category I want to share with you guys is the vegetables I want you guys to bulk juice that I found work the best. And my number one favorite bulk juicing vegetable is, ta-da, jicama. Yes, that jicama root that you may have seen in the store that you don't know what the heck it is. I basically cut off the outside skin of the jicama and then I use that in my juice. It's basically a root vegetable and it tastes really mild. It has basically, to me, it has like a neutral flavor. So you could add it to anything and it adds a little bit of sweetness due to the inulin content that feeds your microbiome and it will taste sweet to us but does not add to you know the sugar load on our body in any significant way so yeah jicama my favorite vegetable to bulk juice of course there are other vegetables you guys can bulk juice that'll produce a lot of juice and they don't include things like kale we'll be talking about kale in a little bit but my other favorite vegetables to bulk juice for example are the cabbages you know a nice cabbage head and when i buy them i weigh it out and i try to get the one that's heavy for its weight especially when they're being sold by the each and normally i get maybe a cabbage organic for about two dollars 250 for about four pounds that's my current price. And then the cabbage makes a lot of juice. I encourage you guys to get the purple cabbage <laughs> instead of the green cabbage because it's a lot more rich in the anthocyanin content that is healthy for us as well as can feed our microbiome. Now aside from the standard green and red cabbage, you can also get Napa cabbage. It's a nice head vegetable that is really great for bulk juicing. Another thing I love for bulk juicing related to the cabbages are the bok choy. I'd like to get bok choy with nice thick you know um, stems on the bottom and not a lot of greens that really makes a nice lot of lot of good water content to juice for you guys and of course things like the cabbage and the bok choy and the cruciferous family of vegetables that are anti-cancer and also help with phase two liver detoxification we cannot forget celery we'll throw up celery you know whether you want to juice celery straight which i have a video where i juice five heads of celery in the name of j2 no clogging no jamming no problem <laughs> link down below to that Celery is another excellent vegetable you guys can use to bulk juice to make a pretty significant quantity of juice with the celery. I do like to pre-cut that so I could more effectively load up the Nama J2 hopper. And finally, the last items I like to bulk juice for my vegetables anyways are things like the iceberg lettuce. Yes, the iceberg lettuce. But John, iceberg lettuce has no nutrition. That's not exactly correct. It has some nutrition, but it has a lot of structured water for you guys. Of course, Healthier than the iceberg lettuce is the romaine lettuce. Once again, when I'm selecting romaine lettuce, I try to pick up the head and weigh it by my hand or put it on the scale in the store and get the one that's heaviest because the one that's heaviest has the most water content. I'm really looking for the nice stems at the bottom, not the greens at the top because they add lots of good water content to your juices to make the base of your bulk juicing recipe that I'll explain more in a minute. So number three was sharing with you guys the base vegetables that should make up like 75% or maybe even a little bit more or even 100% of your um, batch juice because it's going to create a lot of juice fairly quickly, fairly easily and going to be delicious at the same time. But of course, I, tip number four is I want you guys to have add on vegetables and herbs to basically add greater nutrition and nutrient density, and more importantly, some unique flavors to your juice. So, you know, things like kale could be used to add in more nutrient density. I wouldn't bulk juice beets because that could get kind of rather strong and some people are, are objectionable to that flavor, but I could add that in as an add-on in the 25% of the juice that I'm adding in. Of course, other things you could add in for add-ons are things like turmeric, right? Throw up two picture turmeric jar, picture a ginger up there also. Also herbs, whether you wanna put in something like mint, which I've been juicing a lot of lately, or what I'll be juicing today is basil or other small amounts of herbs that could actually add nice flavors to your juices as well as tons of nutrition. Herbs are very high in antioxidants. That's what caused them to be really fragrant, for example. Of course, other things you may want to add in small amounts of habanero peppers or even garlic, you know, to really give your juice a kick and amp up its nutritional value could be great as well. My fifth tip for bulk juicing is you guys are juicing in bulk in large quantities and you're going to store it for a period of time. I always encourage you guys to get some citric acid in your juice. I've seen people online that they'll basically get citric acid powder and add that to their juices to make it more stable and store longer. I don't recommend that at all. What I recommend is getting natural citric acid through 
fruits like lemons and limes and I juice those with the skin the skin is edible now yes juicing skin of lemons and limes I encourage you guys to juice them organically and wash them well of course they will make your juice taste stronger but they're a lot more nutritious when you juice the skin of the lemons and limes due to the bioflavonoids and other beneficial phytonutrients in the skin and the peels of the lemons and limes. Of course, if those flavors are too strong for you, then cut it out. I would leave as much white pith as you, you are able. Um, but yeah, adding the lemons and lime just are basically the fifth tip because they will help your juices maintain and stay fresher longer when you store them. My sixth tip is, boom, money saving. I'll we'll throw it up because it's kind of a big deal. Money saving. I want you guys to be able to save money when bulk juicing. And because I've been bulk juicing and eating tons and copious amounts of fruits and vegetables for the last 28 years, I know how to get the best deals. And that's what I want to share with you guys in this video. So my first tip on getting the best prices on produce is visiting your local wholesale produce terminal. I visited produce terminals outside Chicago and Washington, D.C., um, in Los Angeles that I go to regularly, in San Francisco, maybe one in Cincinnati or some other place over there somewhere. I haven't been to all of them. There's a lot of them, but look up a local produce terminal. If there is one in your area, they're generally around larger cities. Now, if you don't have a produce terminal, maybe you guys could look up like wholesale produce distributors. Some of them may sell to end users when you purchase by the case. It's a very important distinction. They won't just sell you one cucumber. They'll sell you a case of cucumbers, but if you're bulk juicing, you could buy a case of cucumbers, juice it all, store it in glass, and seal it properly, easily store it for a week. This is excellent if you're doing a juice fast. Now that may not be you know reasonable for some of you guys. You may not be able to find a wholesaler or produce terminal. So what I would say the next bet, best, best bet for you is visit a local farmer's market and talk to the farmers. If you guys want the extra special deals, go at the end when they're gonna, the farmers are taking things home, they're more likely to give you guys a good deal. Like, oh, I see you're taking home a case of box of cucumbers because they didn't sell. Hey, I, I do juicing and I juice a lot. Can you sell me that whole case and give me a good price? I'll be glad to take them off your hands so you don't have to go home and compost them, you know, or whatever he's going to do with them, right? Because they're going to go bad on him if he doesn't sell them. So, you know, I found in this way you could get some really excellent deals on produce. Of course, just shop in your local farmer's market for fresher quality produce and supporting local agriculture is one of the best things to do as well. I visit farms every week in my city to you know source the best quality and fresh picked fruits and vegetables myself another money saving tip i encourage you guys to do is check your local sale papers your local sale ads here in my area every wednesday all the grocery stores in the area come out with their sale paper their sale ad and i go to a website called flip flipp.com -P and they basically have digital copies of all the different ads of the different grocery stores online and I get to just review them and look at all them and I can see oh this place has celery on sale this week this place has apples on sale this place has cabbage this place has jicama four pounds for a dollar this week right and when things are on sale guys and I batch juice right that's great because I'll go and whatever's on sale that week is going to make up the majority of my batch juicing for that week. So I got I recently got a deal on cantaloupes. And actually, that's why I'm juicing a lot of cantaloupes in this episode. I got a deal on jicama. So that's why that's also an ingredient. What I'm juicing, actually, they, they were, those, those were the ones for 25 cents a pound. But just buy in bulk because you could just buy them in bulk and then come home and batch juice them, turn them into juice, put them in your fridge, and they'll store easily a week, right? And of course, I recommend you go in at the first day of the sale when the items just go on sale, batch juice them that day, and then the last day of the sale, right? If you like those ingredients, go back on the last day, which here in my town is Tuesdays, buy all those ingredients again, do another batch juice on Tuesday so you can still, you know, get those same deals you got previously. And of course, the following day, Wednesday, the new sale comes out with different ingredients. Or maybe you could hold over some of the items you bought on the Tuesday for Wednesday and then combine last week's ingredients with the upcoming ingredients to make even more amazing combination of juices. Of course, aside from watching the sales where you don't have to necessarily buy too much, but if things are on sale, like I'll buy 40 pounds of jicama, like just in a heartbeat, if it's on sale, four pounds per dollar, because right there it only cost me 10 bucks. And basically, one pound of produce in general, on average, makes about one cup of juice. Some more, some less. 
but that's a lot of juice. 40 pounds of jicama will make 40 cups of juice. So 40 times eight, you guys do the math, that's a lot of juice. And the amazing thing about jicama is that it stores really well. I'll just leave it in my living room, right? Not even in the fridge, it'll easily store a week or two Maybe sometimes even three if I get jicama that's really fresh when I select them and hand select each one. Of course, another technique that you can use if you guys bulk juice and you need specific items like John, I juice celery every week. You could go to the produce manager and say, hey guys, I buy a lot of celery, I'm juicing, and if I bought a case, would you guys give me a special deal? Sometimes stores will basically give you a wholesale price plus 10 or 20 percent, right? Sometimes they'll basically give you the retail price minus 10 or 20 percent, but you don't know unless you ask. So that's another great way to save money when you are batch juicing. Of course, the best way to save money when batch juicing, which is what I recommend you guys do, and I do myself, I'd be a charlatan if I didn't, <laughs> is to grow a garden. My whole backyard is a garden where I grow all edible plants that I could harvest and actually a lot of them actually end up in the juice. You're gonna see a whole bowl of produce that I didn't have to pay for because I actually I got free plant starch from a local nursery and I planted them and now literally 10 months of the year, nine months of the year, I will have fresh basil to harvest to put in my juices so I could ramp up my antioxidant content, ramp up the flavors, have some really unique and amazing flavors and save tons of money because I put in a garden. I've been gardening for many years now, and if you guys wanna check out and learn how to grow your own food, you can check out my gardening channel on YouTube, all free, just for you guys, at Growing Your Greens, right? And you know, your purchase, when you support me by using that coupon code that I mentioned earlier, I'll mention at the end, it's uh, Batch 10, we'll save you guys 10% off, that allows me to have the money to be able to make videos on YouTube, to do the juicing education as well as health education and gardening education that I do and I love so much. So once again, guys, you know, when you guys use that coupon code, not only will you save 10%, $55, but you're also going to support me so I can continue my mission to educate the world about the power of fruits and vegetables and how to extract them in the best ways possible so that you guys can get the health benefits and weight loss you deserve. My seventh tip for batch juicing is simply this. I want you guys to be able to create your own recipes and not have to follow somebody else's recipes to do batch juicing. Basically, all the recipes you're gonna find out there for the most part, with a few exceptions, were designed before batch juicers came out. You know, the lemon ginger blast came out way before batch juicing. And while it may be a delicious recipe, good for healing and all these things, it may not be the best recipe for batch juicing as is a lot of the recipes out there they're designed for other reasons for batch juicing if you guys want to be able to juice fast juice quickly and have something nutritious i encourage you guys to learn how to create your own recipes you know and the, the basic deal is out of the base ingredients that i discussed earlier you want to use 75 percent of your glass or containers or your, the volume of the base ingredients any mixture or combination thereof. I encourage you guys to use all the non-sweet fruits and vegetables predominantly with a little bit of the fruits if you need that for sweetness or just exclude them if you don't. And then add, of course, the other 25% of the add-on vegetables, including things like kale and other leafy greens that could taste rather strong and including things like herbs, including ginger and turmeric and garlic, just a tiny bit, you know, or even hot pepper you know, to get add some nice flavors to your juice and also up the phytonutrient content. If you guys want to learn more about creating your own juice recipes, link down below to my video on how to create your own juice recipes, where I teach you guys some of the juice recipes I make, by example, and also show you guys more tips and techniques on how to create your own juice recipes. And this is what I do for myself every single week because I get produce items on sale, I harvest things from my garden, and then I put together them in recipes that actually taste good because I've been doing it for so long. And until I have my recipe, juicing recipe book and juicing book, right, I want you guys to be able to do it yourself. It's, it's like, like give a man a fish, you know, feed him for a day, but teach a man to fish, feed him for a lifetime. And I want you guys to seriously you know, learn how to create your own recipe so you're not going to be dependent on somebody else's recipe. 
Also, when you're making your own recipes, you could drink the produce items that you're drawn to physically, that you like, that you enjoy, not because somebody else made it and they said you got to drink it. You could also do things like look up on PubMed and different scientific websites, the different produce items that will help you achieve your health goals or healing of different ailments in your body, whatever they may be. Once again, link down below to my video, how to create your own recipes where I discuss this in greater detail. So speaking of recipe formulation, I want to share with you guys a recipe that I'm making today based on what's on sale in my local area, what I got, and also of course what's in my garden using my very techniques that I'm showing with you guys, right? I really do this and that's why I know these are the tips that you guys need because this is what I do myself and I want to teach you guys how to do this. It's so important to me, okay? So the recipe I'm making today is simply that cantaloupe. I got organic cantaloupe, an amazing deal on organic cantaloupe. I basically cut off the skin because the skin was kind of getting a little bit old, but we got all the pieces, including the seeds. Yes, you can juice the seeds. Some, ju some juices will basically clog and jam on the seeds. The Nama J2 hasn't clogged and jammed on the seeds when you, you, know, you rotate the items and feed things in properly. The next, and that's one whole bowl here, right? Now that's half of the juice is uh, approximately the fruits. Now, of course, I recommend the other half of the uh, juice is vegetables. So in this container here, we basically got a half a bowl of cubed up jicama, a half a bowl of basically cut up carrots, and then I got a little ginger here in the middle. Of course, you know, I bought these ingredients, but of course I'm like, what can I juice from my garden? Because if you've got a garden, you always want to eat something out of your garden every single day. And it's pretty easy. I'm like, oh, I got a lot of basil that's bolting. It's going to flower. So let's harvest a whole bowl of basil. This is a whole bowl. Yeah, yes, it's like light and fluffy, but it's a whole bowl of basil, right? That's going to add a nice flavor. Now, this is not any basil. This actually happens to be Thai basil. Woo! And I can smell it. It smells kind of like more like licorice than like a standard Italian basil. So I kind of consider this between a basil and a mint. It's like right in between, kind of tastes like licorice. It's also got those purple pigments in there that are really good for you. And so that's my juicing recipe today that I'm using. So half fruits, half vegetables, plus some additional um, greens or herbs out of my garden. Which brings me to the eighth tip for you guys. The eighth tip is I want you guys, when you guys batch juice, to ensure you're using 50% or even better is less fruits when you're juicing. That's super critical, guys. Most people do not understand the power of the fruits. The fruits are amazingly healing. And yes, I know people that go on a fruit juice fast and, you know, grape juice fasts. And if you guys want to do that, that is up to you. I'm going to, I'm telling you, I'm showing you guys my personal opinions and what I've seen work in the long run over time. And for me, the reason for juicing is not to get more fruits in me. Fruits are amazingly delicious to just eat them alone. You don't need to juice them to eat fruits. Just go on, eat fruits, man, eat whole fruits. Or even better, just like blend up the fruits, right? While there is benefits to juicing even 100% straight fruit juices, I believe there's greater benefit by including more vegetables. Because here's the thing, guys. Most people eat enough fruits because they taste amazing. The challenge is most people do not eat enough vegetables because they don't taste so amazing. And that's where the juicer comes in. The juicer allows you to basically concentrate the amount of vegetables you're eating and you're going to get into you in a very easy to digest method through the juice where your body doesn't have to use you know, a lot of work or energy to basically process those hard vegetable fibers and extract the nutrients out of it. The juicer is doing some of the digestion for you. And that's why I personally believe juicing vegetables is really important. Now, that's why I dedicated a whole tip number eight to make sure you have 50% or even less. I mean, it'd be best if it was zero if you can stomach a straight juice. If I juice this stuff alone straight, mm, the basil might be pretty strong, but when I temper the basil down, with the cantaloupe, but then it makes it just right for me personally. But if you just did this recipe alone, I'd probably put a little bit ginger because now I'm, when I'm adding it to sh the uh, cantaloupes, right, you need a little bit more ginger to overpower the sweetness to balance it out. But I would take out half the ginger if I wasn't juicing this recipe. And even just jicama carrots, man, would be an amazing recipe to juice. I would tend to focus on putting more jicama than carrots because jicama is a little bit more watery and juicier and makes a little bit more juice than the carrots do. In any case, actually, what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and probably just fast forward this part of the video because I'm actually going to bulk juice. 
or batch juice in this video for you guys and show you guys the fast forwarded process to save you guys some time. So I'm just gonna load up a little bit of this and turn the juicer on and let it go to town. So I'm halfway done juicing so far and I got basically almost two quarts of juice. My next tip, number nine for batch juicing is I want you guys to store your juices properly, which I'm gonna demonstrate right now. So we got my little um, funnel here. I put it on top of the jar. This is what I do. You could just pour it directly in, but I like to double strain it. And we're just gonna go ahead and pour this juice right in through the sieve again. Loaded up to about 800 milliliters of juice approximately. I take the funnel off. Now, most important step is you want to use those vacuum lids that I showed you guys earlier. Put that on the top. Once again, we want to make sure we have a head space on there. And then we're going to take the vacuum pump. Once again, get the right vacuum pump. Link down below. Uh, Amazon.com slash shop slash John Kohler. And you can see the level of the juice is rising. Let's pump this up a bunch here for you guys. And I'll, I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera, but if you guys see that, there's air bubbles rising up and out of the juice. This is why vacuum sealing your juice, if you're batch juicing, is critically important. And basically every other video I've seen people batch juicing, they leave out this step. Because the oxygen in the headspace, but not just the headspace, the dissolved oxygen in the juice will cause it to go bad over time if you don't suck it out. That's why I recommend the strongest pump. There's a method to my madness, guys. If you guys don't want to pump, you don't have the strength to pump, you guys can get an electric pump. The electric pumps, to my best estimation, maybe pump about 14 or 15 um, you know, inches of mercury, whereas this could go in excess of 20, maybe 21, 22 maybe. But you guys can really see, now there's a lot of air bubbles coming up to the top, which eventually will pop, and then you'll have basically an air evacuated juice. All right, so I think we evacuated all the air. At a certain point, you, there won't be any more bubbles coming out, and that's when you know it's ready to store. So most important, tip number nine, store your juices properly under vacuum, strong vacuum, use the special vacuum lids. They got flat lids that you can use. I don't recommend that. They are not able to pull the sufficient vacuum you can with these lids. Once again, this kit could be as low as $10 link down below now more importantly once you got these jars vacuumed out the next step is you want to put them in your fridge and make sure your fridge is set to the appropriate temperature what's the appropriate temperature for storing juices right above freezing so you want your fridge to be depending on how precise it is 33 to 36 degrees maybe 35 degrees right above freezing so your step doesn't freeze because that's the freezer. We don't want to freeze our juice. I do not recommend freezing your juice for storage because the issue with that is when it thaws out, there's going to be a lot of oxidation damage unless it's done under vacuum. That being said, just storing your juice under vacuum, strong vacuum like this in my fridge, I could easily store these juices for up to seven days. Links down below to my video where I go into all my 10 tips on how to store your juices for up to a week because this was a small portion of it. All right, as you guys can see, I'm done batch juicing. I got everything stored under vacuum pressure. I made four quarts plus a little bit to try. So I'm going to try it on camera for you guys, let you guys know what I think. Mmm, that's a nice recipe. So I taste the faint sweetness of the cantaloupe, but then I'm kind of overpowered with the carrots. I don't taste the hickam at all. And I taste a nice licorice flavor of the Thai basil and I taste a little hint of the ginger. It just bounced just right, guys. And I mean, I've been making juicing recipes for 28 years now. Hopefully, you know, when you guys get batch juicing, you'll be able to experiment in your own kitchen. That's one of the joys of juicing, is putting your recipes together and make sure you don't use too much ginger or too much basil for you, because some of you guys might, this might be really strong. You know, you might want to start out with a little bit more fruit and, you know, not use as many vegetables, because they're going to taste better, especially if you're making it for kids. But to me, this tastes amazingly refreshing. And once again, I'm packing my juice full of vegetables, which is my goal. But at the same time, I'm getting rid of, you know, subadequate fruit that I wouldn't want to eat because it wasn't that sweet. Mmm. 
so delicious. And that brings me down to the 10th and final tip I want to share with you guys when you're batch juicing. And simply, that is, I don't want you to forget about the auto cleaning feature of the Nama J2 juicer. I'm like the only guy that shows this. And this is a way you can make cleaning a little bit easier with the Nama J2. So what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that your spout cap is closed. Number one, you're going to open up your lid. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a pitcher of water. This is approximately 25 ounces, 24, 25 ounces of warm water with like three squirts of dish soap in there for hand washing. What we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and pour this in slowly into the machine. The machine has been designed so that it will not leak at this seam. Not every machine will do this. You guys are going to see the hopper is literally loading up with water in there. Maybe bubbling a little bit because it's kind of soaking down. We're going to go ahead and then close the lid and turn the machine on. And the amazing thing about the Nama J2 is that literally it is auto cleaning itself because what's happening is it's feeding in the soapy water in there into the bottom chamber a little bit at the time. And the machine with the auger running inside it is basically augering it around and basically swishing it all around, getting all the juicing surfaces. You may see some pulp where the pulp comes out come out because literally it's basically forcing some of that pulp through the machine so it won't be in the machine when you have to take it apart to clean. That's one of the amazing beauties about the Nama J2. They've designed it from the ground up to save you guys time juicing. Whether you're batch juicing or whether you're cleaning it at the end and doing this auto clean function to help get it a little bit cleaner on the inside when you're done. Uh, once you let this run a few minutes then you can go ahead and turn the machine off and now we're just going to go ahead and open this up and you guys can see all the dirty water coming out. This is like juice with the water and inside the machine is basically helped to clean itself for you guys. Now you still will need to do some rinsing and scrubbing of course. I'm not going to say you don't but we're going to tip this up and I want to show you guys what's left inside the juicer real quick. So we're going to close that spout cap. We're going to take off this ho top hopper, show you guys inside there. Now there's a little bit of pulp left in here, but in the bottom of this is basically pre-soaked for you to put in a dish brush. Link down below to my Amazon store where I share with you guys my special brushes I like to use. I use an Ikea brush to basically brush it out. You guys can see just soapy water. Just run this under the sink with the water running. Brush it all out, you're done. Oh, we got one leaf that did get juiced on the underside of the um, top here. The auger, look at that, the auger is relatively clean. There's a little bit of stuff on here, but it's already pre-soaked up, so just scrub this down as you're blasting water on it. No pulp in the bottom, a little bit in this little ring here that you can just scrape out, no problem. Next up, we got the juicing wiping blade, which looks to be pretty clean to me. We got a little bit of pulp still on the bottom of the juicing screen, a lot, of, a little bit on the inside of the juicing screen that we could basically just uh, you know scrape right out and get it into the catch cup. And of course, in the bottom of the bowl, fairly easy to clean. We'll open up this quick release hatch and just you know push push all the pulp right into our pulp catch bin. I estimate cleaning this at this point now is going to take about three minutes to clean. So literally we made four you know, quarts of juice and now we have three minutes of cleaning guys. You guys can do it. <laughs> three minutes of cleaning is not that difficult. The fastest juicer for me to clean that's being sold is about 90 seconds So this. Yes, this is double the time. I could sell you a juicer that's easier to clean, but the challenge is that juicer is going to take a lot longer to juice this volume of produce. So that brings us now to the 11th and bonus tip that I wanna share with you guys actually how to be more efficient when juicing with the Nama J2 juicer. Now this depends on your specific recipe that you made. Some recipes you could do this with and some recipes you'll need to modify this approach. So the, the tip is once you got the juice made and you got the pulp right, you take this pulp, depending on what you're juicing, it could be more dry or more wet. I mean, I could squeeze some juice out of this. You know, I could sell you a juicer that's $2,500 to get this pulp sawdust dry.
But once again, that machine's gonna take you a lot longer to make four quarts of juice. So what you're gonna do with this is that you could basically take this pulp and dump it back into the machine. In some cases, this will work if you dump straight pulp back into the machine. In many cases though, when you dump straight pulp back in the machine, you'll find that it sticks to the sidewalls and it basically doesn't get funneled into the machine. So I have a solution for that, being the number one world's juicer expert. I've experimented and found out how you guys can easily do that. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the, take the cubed up jicama or other root vegetables such as carrots, chop those into little cubes, maybe half inch cubes. You're going to put a handful of this in and then a handful of the jicama cubes, a handful of this in, a handful of the jicama cubes. I'll post a link down below to the video I made where I show this very technique when I juice five heads of celery to basically extract more juice out of the celery and you know juice the jicama at the same time so then I have a jicama slash celery juice. This will get your pulp drier and you'll only need to sacrifice an inexpensive vegetable such as the jicama which currently is costing me 25 cents a pound or something like carrots which you can get a bag of juice carrots 25 pound bag for maybe $6.99 conventional or if you go to Costco and you want the organic one depending on where you live it could be as low as 60 cents a pound. But you know the juicer works a lot better with cubed up hard roots to kind of get get a more efficient extraction out of the softer produce. Of course if you don't want to go through this hassle you could also buy Alexa's nut milk bag. My link down below to that video where I show you guys could put this pulp in a bag and just squeeze it out and get up to maybe 20% more juice when using the NAMA that method. That being said I always like to rejuice my pulp especially if it's some valuable pulp that has lots of phytonutrients or it was you know some ingredients that cost a lot of money. Of course to some of you guys out there you guys just want to get the pulp drier to get more juice so that you guys could save more money and once again make more batch juice or bulk juice with all the tips I share with you guys in this episode. Of course another money saving tip if you guys don't already own the NAMA J2 juicer is you guys want to use that coupon code Batch 10, we'll throw it up right there at namawell.com, link down below in the description to save 10% off the Namawell juicer, the J2 or 10% off on the J1, which actually I don't recommend. I love the J2, it's a juicer that I use the most 90% of the time to make all my batch juices. So once again, I want to thank you guys for using my coupon code that will not only save you guys money, but also Nama will share with me a small commission so I can continue to make these educational videos for you guys and share with you guys all my tips on juicing that could basically put you ahead of the pack with all my tips that you simply are not going to hear on any other channel. I don't hold anything back guys. I'm never going to have a course you know to sell you guys some course so you guys could learn all my secrets. I just put them in my videos because I want you guys to be able to make the lifestyle changes, get the results to benefit your health, to lose the weight based on all the information that I've accumulated over the years, you know, hoarding my information and selling it to you guys for those of you guys that have, can afford it. You know, I would never do that because that's not who I am. You know, I'll basically tell you guys one of the reasons why I am alive today is because I changed my diet and I got into juicing. And I know it could help you guys too. And I want you guys to have the best and most accurate information to get the best results. So I thank you guys for staying to the end of this video. And if you guys appreciated this episode and want me to do more educational episodes like this, hey, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. More importantly, please guys, share this with other different juicing communities, different Facebook groups. If you're on social media, share it in communities that do juice fasting or batch juicing so that they could learn literally from the expert my tips on how to do it the best ways possible to save the most money and make the most juice to be able to store it the longest amount of time. Also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss my new and upcoming episodes I'll be coming every five to seven days you don't know where I show up or what new juicers I'll be testing or what new new juicer knowledge bombs I'll be dropping on you and make sure you click the little bell to get notified as my new videos come out. And finally, be sure to check our past episodes. The past episodes are all from knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time on this channel dedicated to teach you guys all about the best appliances to process and eat more fruits and vegetables and other plant foods so that you guys could be healthier. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.